Hello viewers, I am Manoranjan Borman and you are watching my YouTube channel Medical Lab Tech. Today I am going to talk about virus and its structure, size, nucleic acids and effects of phenol and alcohol on viruses. Viruses are too small to see under a light microscope. But bacteria you can see under light microscope. So viruses are infectious agents like bacteria fungus or parasite causes disease virus also causes disease it causes infections to human being that's why it is called as infectious agents also viruses are filterable you can we can filter virus if if you filter a mixture of virus and bacteria then the viruses will be passing uh, through the filter but bacteria will not be able viruses unlike other infectious agents so they are obligate intracellular parasites they need to get into a host cell to multiply otherwise they will not be able to multiply so viruses are recognized as living also non-living also so there is a controversy because Whenever virus is not within a host cell, it is acting like non-living because it cannot multiply without a host cell. But once it will get into a host cell, it can multiply and it can synthesize protein, nucleic acids, etc. Next properties of the viruses. Viruses do not have cellular organization. Even the simple cell used to have cellular organization, at least mitochondria, ribosome, and other cellular organelles they have. But virus do not have a cellular organization. Viruses are filterable, I have already mentioned. So the viruses contain a single type of nucleic acid. They will have either RNA or DNA but they cannot have both the nucleic acids. They will have either RNA or DNA. So they are obligate intracellular parasites. What is obligate intracellular parasite? Intracellular means inside the cell, obligate, strict. It is strictly intracellular parasite. Mm -hmm. It has to get into the cell. Otherwise it cannot grow. And they lack the enzyme which are necessary for protein and nucleic acid synthesis. And they use host machinery to synthesize the protein and nucleic acid. And viruses multiplication is a very complex process. It is not by binary fission. What is binary fission? Binary fission is a very simplest form of cell division, which bacteria uses binary fission for their cell division. So the viruses are unaffected by antibacterial antibiotics. So if, if, a, if anybody will take antibacterial antibiotics, it will not affect virus. Now coming to the size of the virus. So all the clinically important viruses are widely vary in their size. So, if we talk about the measurement, unit of measurement of virus, it is nanometer, that is nm. So, viruses are widely vary in their size from 20 nanometer to 300 nanometer. 20 nanometer is the smallest virus, which is parvovirus, and the 300 nanometer is the largest size, size of the virus, which is pox virus. You can see here, 1 micrometer is equal to 1000 nanometer. You can do the calculation. So, you can have a look. This is the small, smallest virus, 20 nanometer. And this is 300 nanometer, large virus. And this is bacteria cell. It is 1 micrometer, the size is. This is a animal cell. This, this is the largest cell. It, it is around 5 to 10 micrometer. So, how to measure the size of virus? Earlier, 
they have raised to pass virus through a colloid colloidal membrane with different pore size to measure the size of the virus then subsequently they use ultra centrifugation for detecting determining the size of the virus by calculating the rate of sedimentation of varying size virus particles then finally nowadays electron microscopy is the best method to determine the size and even shape of the virus now talking about the shape of virus shape of the virus particle varies in different group of virus so group wise it is different it most of the viruses are spherical see can you see this picture this is spherical this is a corona virus so some are irregular viruses and pleomorphic pleomorphic means their morphology their structure their morphology is not fixed their morphology varies morphology changes that's why it's known as pleomorphic and there are some viruses just look at this virus this is a pox virus its shape is brick shape and you can look at this virus this is rabies virus its shape is bullet shaped and you can see this is this is like a rod so this is a tobacco mosaic virus which is rod shaped and can you have a look at this picture this is a picture of bacteriophage which has a complex morphology and the complete the complete functional virus is known as virion or you can say the infective virus particle is known as virion so if we talk about viral capsid under the different structures of virus the nucleic acid of the virus is surrounded by a protein coat called capsid that means virus is the nucleic acid it has dna or rna so the outer covering of the dna or rna the nucleic acid outer covering of the nucleic acid is known as the viral capsid and viral capsids is made up of some small small protein subunits known as capsomeres and capsomeres are chemically polypeptides and whenever the nucleic acid is enclosed with the capsid then it is called nucleocapsid there are several functions of the capsid the capsid will protect the genome whatever the genome either dna or rna the capsid will give protection because capsid is just outside the genome that is dna or rna so it will give protection and the capsid will have some binding site it will attach to the specific receptor on the host cell and it, it will get entry into the host cell it the capsid helps to assembly and packaging of the viral genetic information and it can act as vehicle of transmission it serves as a vehicle of transmission from one host to another host and the capsid gives the structural symmetry the architecture of the virus particle is given by the capsid have a look at this this is a zika virus so this is genome mainly rna so this is covered by this green layer this green layer in this virus so it is known as the capsid which is giving protection to the genomic rna then if you talk about the different structure of virus there are mainly three types three types of viral architecture the first is icosahedral symmetry second is helical symmetry third is complex structure icosahedral symmetry is a polygonal structure which has 12 vertices 12 vertices means it will have 12 corners and 20 facets it will have 12 corners and 20 facets facets means sides so each facet is in the shape of an equilateral triangle that means each face if you look at one face one side one side is having a equilateral triangle what is equilateral triangle equilateral triangle means 
all the three sides are equal. So, in this icosahedral symmetry of the capsid, there may be two types of capsomeres. We have already known that the capsomeres are the, are the subunits of the capsid. So, it will have two types of capsomeres. One is pentagonal capsomeres that will be there in the corners and it is known as pentons. And, and there is another hexagonal capsomeres making the facets. That means side will be making by the hexagonal capsomeres that is known as hexons. So if we take an example, so adenovirus is a virus which has a architecture of icosahedral symmetry. So that means the adenovirus has a structure like this. So coming to the next is the helical symmetry. Helical symmetry is the the nucleic acid and the capsomere are all together in the form of a helix or a spiral tube. Can you look at this picture? This is a helical capsid. So it it is a spiral spiral structure and it is owned in such a way with the nucleic acid that it looks like a helical tube. And this capsomere covers the RNA and it is protecting the RNA and the capsomere will run un until the end of the RNA. Next is the complex symmetry. So some viruses they do not exhibit ecosidural symmetry or helical symmetry. So those are categories under this complex symmetry. Next, talking about the viral envelope. Some viruses, the capsid is covered by a layer or a membrane which is known as envelope. Like envelope means you can see it is the outer covering. Normally envelope means. So here also the capsid will be covered with a membrane which is known as envelope. And those viruses are having the envelope, it is, it is known as enveloped viruses. So, negative stranded RNA viruses are mainly enveloped viruses. So, the viruses that do not have an envelope, do not have an outer covering, is known as non envelope or naked viruses. And the, and the virus envelope usually consists of lipid, protein, and glycoprotein and the membrane is similar with the host cell membrane and one important thing is the lipid of the envelope is from the host cell origin while the protein is virus encoded they will virus will synthesize the protein with the help of host cell and the lipid will be directly taking from the host cell origin those viruses which are having envelope, they are sensitive to the lipid solvent. That means if, if you use lipid solvent to the envelope viruses, it will die easily. What are lipid solvents? Lipid solvents are like alcohol, ether, chloroform, detergent. These are lipid solvent. But on the other hand, the non-envelope viruses are not affected by the lipid solvent. So they resist to them. See, have a look at the picture. So this is ecosidral non-envelope virus. By looking at the architecture, you can recognize it. It is ecosidral. But ecosidral is the capsid. So outside, outside the capsid, there is no membrane. So that's why it is non-envelope virus. So Look at this picture. This is the ecosidral symmetry. The capsid is there. Outside this capsid, this membrane is there. So, this is the envelope. So, this is known as the envelope virus with an ecosidral symmetry of the capsid. Now, coming to this side. This is, this, nu this nucleic acid or nucleocapsid is 
like helical it's like helix so it is helical but there is no covering no outer covering outer membrane is there no outer covering that's why we will say it is non enveloped virus with a helical symmetry so once see look at this picture in this picture the capsid is inside there outside the capsid there is a membrane so this membrane makes it enveloped virus so we can say this is a helical helical enveloped virus because the nucleic capsid is helical and it has an envelope so as a result we can say helical enveloped virus so depending on different viruses some viruses may have some spike on their envelope spike or some proje projections so this those projections are known as peplomers so these spikes act as viral attachment protein vap means it will help the virus to bind with the host cell it is mainly made up of protein so if if we talk about peplomers a virus can have more than one type of peplomer or it can have one type of peplomer also so if we take an example of influenza virus this is a picture of influenza virus can you see look at this picture this is one type of peplomer see this this is one type of peplomer and see nearly this is another type of peplomer so it has two types of peplomers one is known as neuraminidis and another is known as hemagglutinin the peplomers helps to attach the virus cell into the host cell through a through the receptor and this peplomers uh, having glycoprotein some glycoprotein also can bind with some receptor on the rbc and it can agglutinate the rbc it has some enzymatic activity also it can cleave neuraminic acid from host cell the envelope confer chemical antigenic and biological properties of the virus so it is very important part of the virus now talking about the nucleic acid of virus i have already told you at the beginning of of this presentation the virus has dna or rna it can have only one either dna or rna cannot have both so dna can be single stranded double stranded circular if you talk about rna rna can be positive sense or negative sense it can be segmented single stranded segmented it can be double stranded segmented next susceptibility to heat and chemical how virus give respond to heat and different types of chemicals first we'll talk about the heat means temperature most of the viruses with few exceptions are highly heat labile heat labile means it is easily destroyable by applying heat so if if we see commonly if we keep set 56 degree centigrade it can kill virus within second if we set 37 degree centigrade it can kill virus within minute and the viruses are stable at low temperature it is very stable at low temperature so if you are freezing it you you huh, it cannot kill the virus and we can store the virus by freezing or there is a process called lyophilization they used to use minus 70 degree centigrade for storing viruses for longer duration now talking about disinfectant so if we talk about phenolic disinfectant it is weak it it is weak on the virus it cannot kill the virus properly so the effective disinfectant is oxidizing agents oxidizing agents are hydrogen peroxide potassium permanganate hypochlorites so if we we use this the viruses will be killed easily and chlorination is also an effective method for water 
purification of water. But there is a problem. There are two viruses which cannot be killed by chlorination. That is hepatitis A virus and polio virus which cannot be killed by chlorination. There is another chemical like formaldehyde and beta propiolactane. It can kill virus very easily. It is a very active agent. So in, ca in the case of preparing killed vaccine, they use this. So if we talk about pH, vi viruses vary greatly in their resistance to acidity. So viruses are very stable at pH in between 5 to 9. But all the viruses can be killed by using a strong alkaline solution. Alkaline medium, it cannot survive. Now talking about the lipid solvent. Envelope viruses are sensitive to the lipid solvent. I have already told, told you before. So those viruses having envelope, they are sensitive. They will be killed. The viruses which envelope will be killed by using lip, lipid solvent. You can kill. So lipid solvents are alcohol, ether, chloroform, bile salts, this. But on the other hand, naked viruses are resistant to the lipid solvent. So if you apply lipid solvent to the naked virus or a non-envelope virus, it cannot kill them. They are resistant. If we talk about antibiotics, bacterial antibiotics are ineffective against viruses. If you use bacterial antibiotic, it cannot kill viruses. Thank you for watching my video and see you in an another video.